welcome to our final edition of Archibiz Unpacks Marketing. Today, I'm joined by Brian McCartney, Chief Creative Strategist at ArcMark, which is a branding and marketing agency for architects. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thanks, Beck. I'm really pleased to be here and uh, good to see you again. Likewise, likewise. So we'll jump straight in to, into it today. Uh, you are an absolute guru in websites. I understand that you've reviewed over 550 of them, which is a huge task sifting through all those, I imagine. Um, were there any key takeaways uh, that were unrelated to the websites themselves that you learned about architecture or architecture firms as a result of your research? Yeah, um, just to be clear, I didn't do them all myself. I do have a team that helped me out with that. But um, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty monumental effort. We, we evaluated uh, over 550 firm uh, websites over, I think, a period of about a year. And I think one of the things that became obvious to us is that, you know, there are some key stages that firms go through as they develop their business. And uh, over time, we've kind of analyzed this and we've noticed that there's really five key stages. And so you have stage one is kind of that uh, that startup phase, you know, and, and we call that the acceptable phase, right? You, you don't need a fancy brand and a, you know, top tier website at that point. You just need something acceptable to kind of get you through, uh, to get you, you know, through that phase of like, I think a lot of firms in that start phase, they're they're kind of they're kind of banking off of work that they uh, they maybe taken a project that uh, uh, got them started or or uh, are are you know uh, working off the the generosity of, of friends who want to kind of help them and and so forth and and so that stage really doesn't require a lot of detailed branding or marketing. But then you you move into stage two. Uh, which is where we get a little bit more established. And what we find there is that, you know, uh, you, you, you're still, you're, you're relying pretty highly on uh, referrals and recommendations. And that can start to cause a lot of uh, wavy, uh, wa it can cause a wavy ride because those referrals and those recommendations, they, they can be really inconsistent and unreliable. And I'll, I'll just briefly cover the other uh, two stages. Stage three is kind of where you're you're actually starting to become a business. It's not solely reliant on the principal or principals to run the business on a day to day. You you'll have maybe some an, another architect in the office. You'll have more staff. Stage four is where we start to develop you know a bigger team. Maybe getting into the you know, 15, maybe 20, 20, 25 plus staff. You've got people in different uh, seats within your business. And then stage five is really where you, you know, you're really kind of like a regional player, maybe a, a national player. But if we come back to stage two, this is where we see a lot of firms plateau in this area of like just relying on those referrals and recommendations. And a lot of firms seem to get stuck at this stage. And so, um, yeah, it, it's just that that's one of the biggest things that we learned uh, through this process of, of looking at all these firm websites. Yeah, great. I mean, that what you've just described there is very similar to the uh, stages of business model that we unpack in our DAPS course. And it's very much aligned with that. We see a lot of firms getting stuck at that level. You know, you yeah. start out and you've got these grand plans and someone throws a project away. It might be a family member or something like that. And yeah. then you get referrals from that. And then, you know, it becomes a sticking point where you can't move away from the firm. But, um, you know, firms plateauing at level two, is that a bad thing? I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because there's a lot of firms that if you look at that, you know, they, 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 they go on for years and years just at that level of, you know, kind of relying on those referrals and, and the recommendations and they develop good relationships uh, with people and, and, and those people happen to be able to get them or, or connect them with uh, consistent projects. And, and that's great. Um, it all depends on kind of what your expectation are expectations are as a firm owner. You know, the, I mentioned the problem that you know many firm owners they cannot disconnect from their firm. You know, it's 
It's not like they can just say, oh, hey, you know what? I'm going to take a month off and go to Italy. Uh, they can't do that easily. Um, they're, uh, you know, because they're f so focused on that, you know, the passive and, and hope marketing, those relationships and referrals, you know, there's no active marketing or business development. And often, um, you know, that's just... I mean, let's face it, architects don't learn this stuff in school. So, so it's a natural thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but times are changing. And what we have seen, others have done research. I think Hinge uh, did some research. They, they, they found out that 40% of you know, firms that get 40% or more of their leads online grow at twice the rate of those who don't. And they are also five to 13% more profitable. So the point is, you know, I don't think we start a business just because we want another job with added responsibilities, longer hours, no benefits. You want a functioning business, and that's why you want to get to that level three. You want something that also, quite frankly, you know, a lot of our firm owners, they're midlife, they're thinking about long term, what, what's down the road, being able to create a business that is we're selling or passing on at some point is is you know a, a, quite frankly it's a it's a way that a lot of architects get get that value back from all that blood sweat and tears yeah absolutely and there's so so much that you hear the the blood sweat and tears that goes into it as well and i think those stats that you've quoted there are, you know that's incredible just online growth um from from online marketing so yeah i'm really keen to understand um how can firms avoid getting stuck from your perspective well, I think a lot of it has to do with mindset. I think, um, you know, ask yourself, do you just want a firm or do you want a sustainable business? And there's a difference. Um, you know, for us, when we work with our clients, one of the first things that we sit down and do with them is we define those clear one, three, 10 year, uh, 10 year goals. We use a tool calls it called the vision traction organizer it's from the eos uh, entrepreneur operating system if you have never read the book traction by gina wickman i highly recommend you read it um, because it, it talks a lot about the concepts behind the eos and and the vto is a free tool we we actually have a guide on our website for smart uh, creating smart goals and it includes kind of a template for using a vto so I think get clear on what those goals are, where do you want to be in a year, three years, 10 years, talk about uh, revenue and profit, um, talk about what you want for your lifestyle, right? Do you want to spend more time with your kids? Do you want to have those vacations? Do you want to, uh, I don't know, buy a second home or a boat or whatever, get clear, create that vision. And then, you know, it, don't rely on referrals alone. Few, you know, we, we've also seen some research and I, uh, I don't have the exact stats, but fewer and fewer people are, rely, are, are asking for referrals. They're, they're trusting online reviews like Google reviews and uh, uh, others. And, and so what we try to focus on is helping our firm owners to amplify uh, the recognition in the market there, you know, help them grow their reputation and help them build relationships uh, that are that are going to uh, help them grow their business in a strategic way. You're fantastic. And you talk about the three R's. I know we've had a conversation about this previously, yeah. so I'm keen for you to share that and how that ties back particularly to to what Ray loves to call the V word, the vision word, which I'm, I'm really um, very happy that you've dropped that because and, and you know that the way you uh, assist architects in marketing their practices, that it does tie back to the vision because ultimately everything should tie back to that vision. So yeah, what, what's the, what are the three R's? Do you want to share those with our viewers? So, so yeah, our core mission at ArcMark is to help architects uh, uh, become more visible in their market, uh, to help them uh, uh, grow their influence and authority, to be seen as experts and then also to help them uh, connect, uh, well, attract, find, and connect with the ideal prospects, partners, and promoters that can help them uh, help them develop a new business. And those those three things correspond to those three R's. So we have 
recognition, right? We need to be recognized. We need to, you know, people need to know who we are and, and we need to be visible uh, in the marketplace, but we also need to be found when somebody's looking for our solutions. Uh, so being able to have a, a SEO optimized website, for example, that shows up in Google searches for relevant uh, questions that your clients are asking. Um, reputation is about creating content, uh, having a system internally to take what's in here, that expertise, the experience, the talent, and communicate that on your website so that when people come to your website, they see, oh wow, this is somebody who's really engaged in solving the exact problems that I'm dealing with. And so I can see, oh wow, they have the, this expertise they must be the person that can help me. So that's the reputation part of it. And obviously by creating content, you know, you're, you're, you're expanding your reputation and you're getting more people to your site as well. Finally, the relationship, that's where we're really trying to figure out, okay, if we're going after a specific type of project or a specific type of client, how are we going to develop relationships that are strategic and are going to help us connect with those types of opportunities? So that's really what we, we call those three R's and we see those as vital to uh, creating a, a, a future for architecture firms, but also to creating a really cohesive marketing plan. Yeah, great. And so are there other tools or strategies that you can use to help firms get from this level two up to this level three? Yeah, you know, I think there's no, there, there may be a linear path. And I, I think I think that's something that depends on your situation. I think one of the things that we try to do that's a very important part of our process is that is that we try to get clarity on the gaps and opportunities that might exist. So, you know, if you if you look at a marketplace and if you look at the types of projects that you're trying to get, you know, who are the people that are getting those projects if you're not getting them? Who are the people that you're competing against? It's important to understand who they are, but it also may be under uh, maybe under maybe important to kind of analyze the market and see well maybe there's some opportunities that that don't currently exist that we can offer that would also provide value to our 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 you know potential clients and help them to see us as a solution you know focusing on those three R's you know first of all uh, increasing that visibility. Uh, creating content that's going to draw people to you, what we what we in the marketing world called inbound marketing, right? Um, and then doing the outbound stuff, uh, attracting and connecting with those prospects, partners, and promoters that, that might include things like landing pages and lead magnets and email offer, you know, email sequences and things like that. Um, and, and really being strategic about the growing that network. I, I think in a lot of cases too, it's for a lot of firms, it comes down to positioning, just being able to communicate your value, uh, putting yourself in a position to be seen as an expert in your area of practice, and then creating that strategic content and social media that's gonna show people that, hey, we're not just about new projects and new hires and awards, we also have the expertise to solve your specific needs. You know, clients, clients come to you because they want or need a solution, not because you want an award. Uh, you know, well, they might come to you because you want an award, but they're going to hire you because you have the solution that they're looking for. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that's something we definitely see that translates across to websites. We see a lot of projects and a lot of photos and a lot of awards. And we don't see much about how they go about solving those problems or where they've solved yeah. those problems. So it's a really big uh, opportunity. So, Brian, um, if, you know, it's it, we're focusing on those three hours, recognition, reputation and relationships. Um, how does that translate to actual marketing? Um, what does it look like? going from this level two to three how, how does a firm go about it well i think for one you've got to have that that you have to have a website that helps you make a great first impression right you are competing not only for eyeballs you're competing for attention 
And, um, you know, being able to clearly communicate what you're about, uh, some of the problems you solve, getting maybe specific and narrow about that is really important on your website because people, when they're searching for something, they're searching for an answer, they're search searching for a match, right? And if they go to your website and they're like, they don't see that, you know, like I, we have examples of websites where you can look at the website, you can look at that homepage, You've got about, let's say, maximum 10 seconds to make an impression. If you don't use the word architect or architecture on that homepage, guess what? You're going to create confusion and people are going to leave. <laughs> um, but we've been focusing, you know, I think we've got a really good process for doing the website and getting that. But there's the missing piece a lot of people think oh i just need the website it's like they used to say well i just need a brochure and you know they think that that was going to be the magic bullet and this if we just have that website it's going to solve everything it, it doesn't you're, you're like i said you're competing for attention so you need to draw people in and what we've created is what we like to call the expertise engine so i know that architects don't like to refer to themselves as experts and and i get that and, and what we have found is that you don't need to be an expert to share expertise. So what we do is we kind of blend a combination of content marketing, uh, video interviews, blogging, and social media. And the idea here is we wanna, we wanna grow your authority. We wanna build your reputation by helping you take that expertise and turn it into material that is gonna help communicate how you are solving these problems, help you answer those really important questions that your ideal future clients are asking you already. I mean, you know what you need to talk about. You just don't know it yet because you haven't thought about it in that context, but your clients are already asking you these questions. When a client comes to you, they ask you a ton of questions. If you just started cataloging those questions and answering those on your blog, oh my goodness, you'd be, you'd be amazed at how that can really start generating uh, inbound traffic. Uh, but using content to really to showcase your experience, your expertise, your talents in a relevant way to those ideal clients, that's really the key. And that's, that's where we see, you know, going from just having a, a tactical solution like a website to actually having uh, a strategic marketing system that's actually bringing in uh, new opportunities and getting people to notice you. That's really key. Yeah, great. Now, I do have to go back and ask a, a question about that, uh, sure. that first comment you made. So when you did the audit of the 550 websites, did you actually find many that didn't have the word architect or architecture on the homepage? Yeah, I don't know what I, I don't have the, the exact number in front of me. But yes, we did. <laughs> um, it's so what one of the key things that I think uh, architects struggle with is that and, and I don't mean to offend anybody. It, it's funny because most of our clients will say, yeah, that's me. Um, the, the, a lot of architects struggle with this idea that uh, they forget who they're talking to, right? So your website isn't meant to talk to other architects. It's to talk to your clients. And you're not trying to impress, you know, the guys at the, at the, at the local AIA chapter or, uh, well, it's AIA in Australia too, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah so, so we're not trying to impress those people. We're trying to impress and communicate our value to the people that actually want to hire you. So um, we did see quite a lot of architecture firm websites where they use alternate words like like some 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 for some reason like architecture or architect wasn't wasn't good enough so we have to say we are a design studio or we are uh you know we are i don't know visionaries or whatever it may be there's all these kind of funny kind of uh i would say uh it, it's 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 they're trying to use language that will kind of differentiate them uh maybe or help to kind of separate them but what what really happens is that kind of language just serves to confuse people because i'm looking for an architect and if it doesn't say architect i'm gonna say 
bye bye, and I'm gonna go back to Google and just right. click on the next link. So yeah. that's what we want to. That's what we want to avoid, right? Yeah, absolutely, and and it doesn't help Google either because uh, Google no yeah, it needs the word architect. <laughs> so <laughs> if we're talking about content on websites, um, are there specific types of content that you found can be most helpful for architects when they're looking to build out that content? Yeah, I think I mentioned it earlier. Like the 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 what we call the news content, the awards, the hires, the oh we got a new project, oh we just completed a project. That stuff is perfectly fine to share, but if it's the only thing you are sharing, then you're really missing out on a big opportunity. And there's, you know, I, I, I talk about expertise, right? Well, we found that there's basically three key categories of what I would call expertise content or uh, I call it expertise buckets, but um, you have what I call are the FAQ answers. So these are the the questions that answer those initial project questions, or maybe even the questions that clients might have before they even know they need an architect. And these are key for getting people to your site and helping them understand that you can help them and you have answers to the key questions that they're struggling with at those initial phases. A second type of content is what I call insider insights. And uh, if you're familiar with the story brand approach of uh, the hero's journey, the client's journey, uh, the, the insider insights allow you to create content or help you talk about topics that may be unfair or may be uh, unfortunate for your clients. So these are things like here in the US, for example, if you're in New York City, and you want to renovate an apartment, you know, you got to go through all of these hassles that are really unfair to, to, you know, the client, uh, there, there's, you know, approvals, maybe at your HOA, there's approvals with the city. There's all this bureaucracy, there's unethical contractors. There's all of these different things. What we try to do is we try to get our architects to talk about these unfair, issues that affect clients and what that kind of content does is it helps you become that trusted sage guide for them because you're pointing out the things that they don't know about they they these are the things that they don't know that they don't know so you're helping giving them insight and helping them uh to understand how your industry works and might be unfair to them so this is a really helpful type of content the third is what we call the pain points. These are the things that actually can go wrong on a project and um, are are the things that they'll want to avoid. Things that result in cost overruns. Things that re result in uh, you know uh, 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 blown schedules uh, or or you know unfortunate surprises uh, in the in the later phases of the project. So those are. Those are the three types of content that we try to focus on in our expertise engine process. And, um, you know, the, the, the internal like news items stuff, we, we kind of let, let our architects focus on that. Um, but if there's a way that we can integrate that into one of these three buckets, we certainly will. The other thing I'd point out is that the pain points are really great to integrate into like a case study or a testimonial. So that's a really great, great way to get those across. Yeah, terrific. Some great advice there around FAQ answers, insider insights and pain points. And just to clarify for those watching, um, you mentioned earlier story brand. Now um, that is a, a formula or process um, that you can, it's an online course effectively, isn't it? That teaches you how to go about building your uh, brand story and your personas, is that correct? Yeah, actually, it's um, it was uh, it, it, there's a book. Uh, I think it's called "Build Your Story Brand" or "Building Your Story Brand" uh, by Donald Miller, and that really explains the the process of creating a story script or a, a, a client journey. Uh, he uses the term, I think, it's story script or brand script. Um, and then, yes, he has Donald Miller has a course online that you can go through to learn this process. And he also does here in the U.S. He does workshops uh, where uh, you know you can go and uh, for two days learn the whole system and and get direct feedback as you're creating your own 
uh, brand script or story script. Yeah. So exactly. yeah, he's, he's a great resource. Fantastic. Uh, so what you suggested so far, Brian, is um, it all makes perfect sense. And if I put my architect hat on and I'm running a small practice right now and I've got, you know, I'm the salesperson, I'm doing the marketing, I'm yeah. running the studio as well. How do I find a way to do this sustainably where it's not going to be the death yeah. of me? Um, and, 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 you know, where I can produce high quality content in a consistent fashion. What's the best way to go about that? So I'll, I'll be really honest with you. It does take work, but it doesn't have to be laborious, right? And now, now if you're a single architect and you're working, you know, by yourself, it might, you know, you, you it, it, you're going to have to dedicate some time uh, to be to doing content. It doesn't mean that you have to do a post every week or even every month, even if you were doing a post. I don't know, every other month or every quarter, that's already a great start. The thing is to have a routine to make time for it, right? But the first thing you wanna do is you really wanna start by identifying those questions that your clients are already asking you. You know, you are answering these questions all the time and you should theoretically be answering them in a kind of consistent way. So um, you already know this stuff. Uh, have a team member or a colleague or a spouse interview you about these questions, right? Um, do a do you know maybe set up like a Zoom call like we're doing and record it or uh, use a tool like uh, I love uh, a tool called Descript, uh, Descript.com. Uh, Descript is awesome. You can do screen recordings. Um, and when you record your uh, your screen recording, it will also transcribe the text for you. It converts it into text. Uh, you can then edit that text into an article. Uh, go figure. Uh, I actually do this with my clients. It's the exact process we use. We get on a Zoom call, I record it, and I turn that content. I turn that audio into text. I also take those video clips and I'll grab selected clips and, and Descript makes this so easy to do. I, I have a video editing background. I know Final Cut and I've been working in video for a long time. I, Descript has changed my life because I can do everything I need to do right in one tool and it's so easy to work with. But you can, you know, you can break up that video into smaller uh, quotes and, and clips that you could share on social media. Um, you know, isolate some tips, isolate some quotes, isolate some, you know, smart things that you said. Uh, you can post that blog material, uh, uh, you know, and, and there's different tools as well to schedule social media. Like we use a, a tool called Content Studio. It allows you to uh, set up your social media. You can uh, you can schedule your, your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn uh, post. And there's another tool that I, I find really useful. It's called Missing Letter. So Missing Letter, and there's, it's, it's, it's Missing Letter, but there's no E before the ending R. So it's Missing let, let, Letter, letter. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, <laughs> but these guys are, these, these guys are brilliant. They, um, they came up with a tool. So, so if you have a blog, let's say on your website, your blog has an RSS feed and you can connect your RSS feed to missing letter. And every time you post a blog, it will automatically generate some uh, draft social media posts. And you can set the number of posts. You can set how often they will go out and they have templates for this. So you don't have to think too hard about it. But this is really great because you just published your, 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 your your blog article and now you're wondering well oh i got to go through this whole process no you just go into missing letter you edit those blog those social media posts you approve them and it's all going to be shared on your uh, on your social media and you can set this up like one blog article we usually post uh over a year's time we'll post one blog article many times so that it, it it's you know repeatedly seen and that also increases the likelihood that somebody's going to click on it and read it. You don't just want to post it once. You want to post it multiple times, but it's just, you know, there's some great tools out there these days that make it fun. Uh, you know, don't look at it as a chore. This is about investing time in yourself and your business and 
uh, getting more opportunities down the line. Yeah, look, there's some great tools that you, you've suggested there, and uh, I love the sound of missing letter. We will uh, share those in the in the show notes, and yeah, ultimately, yeah, you've got to have fun with it. If you don't enjoy it, then you're yeah. not going to do it at the end of the day. So, um, yeah. I, I think you know, I really love what you've shared with us today, Brian. I think particularly, it's really insightful to hear um, your understanding of how architecture firms move through that business life cycle. Um, you know, and I think that uh, should really bring awareness to a lot of architects who might be sitting in that, you know, ambitious stage one or, you know, level two, looking to move to that level three. You really unpack some really helpful information about what they can do to, to move to that le next level. Um, thank you very much for sharing your time today. Uh, that wraps up our series of Archibiz Unpacks Marketing. Um, hope you've enjoyed what we've put together.